grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome today. We'll be looking at the topic. We are in the age of the God man, the age of the God man, the mingling of divinity with humanity. It's a mysterious age, the age where God is no longer just dwelling outside of man, but God is now dwelling in man, which of course is the distinguishing factor between the old covenant and the new covenant. We are in the mysterious age of where God is dwelling in man. In the times of old, God dwelt outside of man. Not that that was his original intention. It was because of the fall, the fall of the first Adam. And of course, in the new creation of the New Testament, we see God dwelling in the life of his believers, of his children. God's good pleasure is to be one with man. From eternity past to eternity future, God's good pleasure is to be one with man. God created man to fellowship with him. God created man to be one with man. Man was to be an expression of God. Man was to manifest and dispense God everywhere he went to. Of course, that plan was aborted. It wasn't aborted. It was just delayed because of the transgression of the first Adam. And Christ coming has actually made it a reality in the life of his redeemed. He dwelling in man and man dwelling in him. It, uh, essentially, we could say that's the eternal plan, one of the or the main purpose of God. God's good pleasure is to walk Himself into man, to dwell in man, and for man to dwell in Him. Of course, this consummates in the new Jerusalem. And we can see if scripture, listen, um, this of course, there are many scriptures in the New Testament uh, John 15, abide in me, and I in you, first John 4. Verse 15, he that confesses the, the, uh, Jesus as the Son of God, God dwells in him and he in God. God trusts none but himself to work his intention in man. And I think that's the crux of the new creation. In the old creation, of course, there were many things that um, even the covenant children of God did. There's things that were displeasing to God. But God does not trust anybody to get his work done in man aside from himself. And when we're talking about God, we're talking about the three one God. The God who is one, but we have him as the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. So God, it's only what God works in man that has any eternal value. And that is what God has come to do for us in the age of the God man. So the age means that the dispensation, the era, we could say the era that is we are living in an era where God is dwelling in man. The age of the God man men began with the incarnation of christ so it was in the incarnation of christ god manifested in the flesh that we could see technically this age began a new race of man a new species a special breed of mankind a man mankind that had god dwelling in them what a what a what a difference maker not just in the image of god but man in the image and having the life of god in them that's the incarnation of that came in through the incarnation of christ but the reality came in in the resurrection of christ god has not stopped manifesting in the flesh what began with christ continues with us today so what we saw I mean, that started with the Lord Jesus Christ through the world becoming flesh, God manifested in the flesh. That started then, but it still continues today. As many that give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ, as many sons of God, God is still manifesting in and through us, expressing himself on the earth. It doesn't mean that everything a child or a believer does, or a child of God does, is God doing it. Of course, everyone is still in a growth process. There's still a sanctification and transformation. But essentially, we are saved for God to walk in and through us. On one hand, we are born of man. On the other hand, we are born of God. Whatever is born of the flesh is flesh. Whatever is born of the spirit is spirit. So we could almost say we have a dual root, a source, and essentially one source, but the human source and the divine source. So on one hand, we are born of man. That is our natural, our, 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 our biological appearance, and also our spiritual root, which is in Christ Jesus by being born of God, we are God in life and nature and not in his Godhead. So any this is the source that actually determines uh, the quality of any life. So uh, the source of humanity being man, of course, the nature of man naturally flows through the nature of any creature is flowing from its source. And so as man, we have our source from our parents. But 
in God, because we are born of God, we are now, God has now made us God in life and nature, but not in his God. We are not God to be worshipped. We are God in his life. That's why we, we have the life of God in us. We are partakers of the divine nature. So God has made us God in his life and nature, but not in his God. Dead. Christ was crucified for God to enter into man. So this was one of the basis, one of the, that's why in John 12, 24, that except the grain of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides by itself. So we could almost say that Christ laid down his life for us, for this new race of humanity to be germinated. He, term, he, he, he terminated the old creation in his death as the last Adam, as the, as the last Adam, and him as the second man was able to resurrect or germinate the new creation. We were redeemed to contain and dispense God. So always very good to have this sink into our heart, especially for me as well and for as many saints of God that look, my purpose of my redemption is for me to contain and to dispense God, to contain and to dispense God, to contain and to express, to manifest that Christ is magnified through our life, that Christ is mag that we become the aromas of Christ, the living epistles of God. So essentially it puts that calling on us and in whatever field, whether in, in our families, in our neighborhood, in our field, in our profession, we are to contain God and to dispense him. And we can't dispense him except he is living in us. So the resurrection of Christ was the birth of the race of the God man. Maybe I could read that from First Peter chapter 1, verse 3 that uh, God in his abundant mercy has begotten us to a lively hope and uh, and through the he has begotten us to a lively hope through the resurrection of Christ. First Peter chapter 1 verse 2 to 3. So essentially it was the resurrection of Christ that actually gave birth to this race of God men. Christ is the first God man, he is the model, the prototype that has produced him, reproduced himself in his many that in the many God men, essentially. He could have called it the many sons of God, the many members of the body of Christ, the many grains from that John 12, 24. So the God men are just the reproduction of Christ. We are God men because we are the reproduction of Christ in his resurrection. So it was in his resurrection that single grain that was sown in his crucifixion in John 12, 24 has now reproduced many grains. So he is the first God man. Like in any product or in any product, you will have the prototype or the model, which every other pro pro every other uh, product of that same kind will reproduce its further. So now we are being conformed into the image of Christ. So we are his many brothers because we are uh, we are we, we we came forth from Christ. We came forth from God. We are of God in Christ Jesus. God's old creation made man in God's image. So God's first creation essentially was man in God's image and likeness. But the, the scripture doesn't tell us that man had the life of God in them. It was in the second creation or in the new creation we now see that God has now put his life into man. This is why Jesus said, I have come that they may have life. So God's new creation made man God in life and nature so man could express God. So essentially it was for God to be expressed through man. So God is in us. God is one with us to express himself to express himself in every field of human endeavor you are not where you are by accident you are where you are as a child of god because god wants to express himself in that environment god wants to express himself in that field in that neighborhood that is our calling as god men we are the vessels of god we are the containers of god that bring god into any atmosphere into any environment what a joy what a joy god's new creation made man god in life and nature so man could express and manifest God. We are God men because we are born of God. In summary, we are God men because we are born of God. Simple. A rat is a rat because it's born of a rat. A lion is a lion because it's born of a lion. An eagle is an eagle because it's born of an eagle. We are men, humans, because we are born of human. So we are God men because we are born of God. Say whatsoever, uh, um, uh, what, uh, whatsoever is, is born of God overcomes the world. And for us, First John five talks about that we are being born of God and being born of God in Christ Jesus. And that is first also John one eleven that he came to his own, his own did not receive, but to as many that are sent to them, he gave to be the 
right to give the privilege to be the sons of God who are not born of the will of man or of blood but who are born of God we are God men because we are members of Christ it's just by being members of Christ my hands can say they are not part of me they are part of me because we are organically one with the Lord we are the many members of his body so if the head is God himself then we as members of his body we are God not in the Godhead not as I not in his deity but God in life and nature so as to express God we are God men because the word of God abides in us and remember John 10 30 the Lord has said it that of course quoting uh, I think Psalm 67 that look I've said that you are God all of you and I mean it was more or less attesting to the fact that look we are God Psalm 82 I think sorry I think Psalm 82 well, let me go quickly go there Psalm 82 and also it was uh, Psalm 82 or Psalm 81 but it was attested to in the Lord Jesus Christ in uh, John chapter 10 verse 30 Psalm 82 if it's not Psalm 82 it will be Psalm 81 there okay Psalm 82 verse 6 I said you are God all of you are children of the most high God so we are God men because the word of God abides in us and the Lord now said in John 10 30 that unto whom the word of the Lord came because we have received the word of God because the word of God is God himself so we are God men because the word of God abides in us that's why we are strong that's why God living in us makes us God men we are God men because God is living inside of us we are God men because God dwells in us it is the indwelling of God that makes us God men we are not God men outside of God we are God men for God by God in God outside of God we are not God men and this is this uh, this is this privilege to the redeemed it's not for us to pride ourselves or to feel some kind of superiority uh, feelings over other human beings but it's for us to express God to bring God as light in any environment where we are in the authority on earth has been given to man so for god to manifest on earth he has to come through a man because he gave he said the heavens are of the heavens are the lord but the earth he has given to the sons of the children of men we are god men because we are one spirit with god he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him so we are god men because we are one spirit with the lord the spirit of god is mingled with our human spirit a very distinct i could almost say that very unique mysterious thing that we don't have words to express it but first corinthians 6 17, 17 says that he that is joined to the lord is one spirit with him we have the mind of christ we are god men because god is our life god is our very substance god is our life we proclaim it we meditate on it we thank him we worship him for this that for us to live is christ christ who is our life so god is our life today the life of god the eternal life of God in us is just God himself God dwelling himself dwelling in us walking his good pleasure in and through us we are God men because we are the mingling of divinity with humanity very mysterious mingling the blend of divinity and humanity is now it has found its expression in human verses and these human verses are non other than the children of God, the sons of God. So in us today, outside externally, you could say, oh, this is the external, the humanity that people see or the physical. But inside of us, our spirit man is actually where God is dwelling. What a joy. We are God men because our life is hidden with Christ in God. Let me read that from Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians chapter 3, verse 4. Colossians 3, verse 4 says that our life is hidden with Christ so when christ let me read from verse 3 for you died and your life is hidden with christ in god actually it's galatians 3 3 when christ with our life appears dead you also will appear with him in glory so christ is our life god is our life today because our life is hidden with christ in god that's why we are god men and we sit down we meditate upon this we praise the lord for it and it just brings joy to our heart it brings confidence it brings faith it brings hope because we know we are never alone the new testament is the age of the god men essentially the new testament age especially from the resurrection of the lord jesus christ we could say is the beginning of the new God men from the outpouring of the spirit in Acts chapter 2 so we see a race of man whereby externally you see them as human but inwardly 
that is actually God at work, working in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. God has a lot of things to get done on the earth here. He has kingdom agendas to get done, but it takes God, living in man, to be able to bring his purpose to pass in any life, city, nation, or family. The age where God is manifesting in the flesh. So God is still manifesting in the flesh. God is still expressing himself in the flesh through his many sons and daughters. So inventions, creativity, and that's why we take the, we boast in the Lord. We boast because we know that the problems of this world, God in us will give us the solution. God in us will bat that solution. We are God men by God, in God, and for God. It's important to note this. We are not God men outside of God. We are God men by God, that is, this is the doing of, it is of God we are in Christ Jesus. It is the doing of God. And we are God men in God. It is in God, it is in union with God that we are God men. Outside union, forget it. And we are God men for God. It's not for our own to carry out our own human selfish motive or desires, but for God. That is the purpose why God did this is for the expression of himself. So we understand that we are just glorified vessels, vessels of mercy that God is using to bring to pass his agenda, his purpose on earth. We are God made for God to express himself on earth. I like to see that I am a God man in this profession, in this field, in this family, in this neighborhood, in this church, in this nation, in this world, so that God could express himself in an area where he has called me to and i think the same for you and as many saints of god we are god men that is god makes us a god in that field just like he told of uh, moses he said you see i've made you a god unto pharaoh that is for any field any profession any area god god makes us god men in that area because that's how we can bring the light of god god himself is his light god himself is his glory so god wants to radiate in every field of human endeavor and we are now privileged versus as his children to reflect that we are god men to manifest god to make god visible not physically but to bring god to make god tangible that men we see our good work and glorify our father in heaven what eyes have not seen what ears have not heard what the heart has not conceived god begins to manifest and cause it to come forth through our life in adam we were mere men we are just humans another statistics on the earth in christ we are god men two distinct personalities the first man the, the first adam and the last adam in the first adam we were mere men humans human life alone in the image of god but without the life of god in christ oh a distinguishing factor we are now god men that is god is now our very life and our substance almost like a toy and a baby a toy is in the image of a human but it doesn't have the life of a human and a baby is an organic being that has a life in it so god men are carriers of god so we are carriers of god because god is dwelling in us god is being glorified in and through us so it's always good to just sit down and say wow i am carrying god so when i'm going out today i am carrying god with me when i'm coming back i am still carrying god what a privilege we are not just carrying god but we are dispensers of god we are carrying god to dispense him to express him to make him manifest to reflect his light to be the living epistles among men so even when people will not come to church or uh, come across the word of god or back come to the word of god god is taking his word to them w-o-r-d god is taking himself to them through us his vessels because we are now the living epistles because we are carrying god and we are dispensing god the aroma of god john chapter 3 as the lord said in verse 6 i believe the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes so is everyone who is born of the spirit a very mysterious being that's why we say we're in that mysterious age where god is dwelling in men who can catch the wind is there anyone that can understand the movement of the wind you can't see but you can't deny its effect it's invisible to the human eye to the physical eye but you can't deny its effect so the lord is 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 is, is, is paralleling our status is even much more than the wind so is anyone that is born of the spirit because we we are a mysterious being on the earth here supernatural beings beings that are outward you say they look like every other human but inward it is god working in us to will and to do for his good pleasure 
and be glorified God in me. Galatians 1 24. Glorifying God. That is that's one of God's ultimate purpose for us in any field he has called us to that people will see our good work and they begin to glorify God in us. That they are they see God. Glory is God expressed. Good glory is God did made manifested. So that in any field where we are in, God is glorified. God is manifested. God is brought to light. What a joy. As a nurse, as a doctor, an architect, an accountant, a lawyer, as a pastor or a music minister, God is being glorified through and in through our life. Jesus did not just become a man. That's our Lord did not just become a man to show us how to live as God men. He has come back to live the God man's life in us. He has come back. So he didn't just show us a prototype. Oh, this is an example. Just follow me from an external point of view. It almost looked like what happened in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, where God would say, okay, uh, these are the laws of God, the Ten Commandments of God. Go do it. No. He did that for us and as an example, as a pattern, but he now came back inside of us in his resurrection as a life-giving spirit in our heart to actually live that life. That's how we're actually being conformed into the image of his son. Of course, it's by the help of him as the Holy Spirit living inside of us, manifesting himself in us. So as we behold him as in a glass, as we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. As he said in John 15, abide in me and I in you. As we abide in him, we make him our dwelling in place we make him our home we make him our place of rest he abides in us it is him in us that actually makes us god men without christ in us we dare not say we are god men because that is the prototype that is the model god and man he is god and man divinity and humanity what a privilege that we belong to this special breed this supernatural race of humanity none but god himself can work his good pleasure in us so it's good for us to understand that that look the purpose the plan the agenda god has for my life for your life as a redeemer of the law will never be fulfilled ex to its maximum effect except god comes to work in us and god could trust nobody to get this job done apart from himself that's why he has taken the responsibility to come inside of us to work in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure what's a joy this causes joy and praises and adoration from our heart every day to the lord god men are the many sons of god born in christ's resurrection so it is in the resurrection of christ we want to keep accentuating this it is through the resurrection of christ that we are god men his incarnation, in my opinion, was the beginning of the race of God man, but he was the only one, technically, we could say there was no other God man in his incarnation. He is God manifested in the flesh. It was in his resurrection now the many grace had been reproduced because the the seed uh, the grain of seed, the grain of wheat had now gone through death to reproduce. Just like any natural fruit, we have to be buried to reproduce itself. I have said, you are God's, as the Lord said. So it was said in Psalm 82 verse 5, and also the Lord repeated it in John 10, 30, and of course all through the epistles, we see this fact there that God is made manifested in us that you are God's. We are not God in life and nature outside of God. We are God, men, in God, by God, and for God. The goal is by God. God did it. It is of God we are in Christ Jesus. And it is for Him. It is to express Him. It is to magnify Him. To make Him manifest among men. What a joy. The mystery of Godliness is God becoming man so that to make man God in life and nature but not in the Godhead. So today we'll be able to look at the topic that we are in the age of the God men. Who are the God men? They are believers in Christ Jesus. They are Christians who are walking with the Lord. Who are being conformed to the image of God's dear Son. It's a mysterious age, an age whereby God is no longer dwelling outside of man, but God is now dwelling in his children, in the believers in Christ Jesus. Why is he dwelling in us? To make himself manifest, to express himself in every field of humanity, to express himself so that we will be the light of the world. We are God men because we are the temple of God. We are called the temple of God because we are God men. We are these living epistles, the aroma of Christ. God's good pleasure can never be fulfilled to its maximum effect except it comes into us to live his life through us. This is why our prayers, our praises, our adoration to God is always going back to God. As humans, we are born of man and we are also born of God. And to be born of God is greater than being born of man. Of course, to be born of God is a thing of the spirit of our inner man. And what a joy to this special privilege that we are in the era, we are in in the age, in the dispensation of the God man. Why? The mystery of godliness. First Timothy 3 16. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. So
So God is still manifesting in the flesh today. Is God becoming a man so as to make man God in life and nature, but not in his deity, not in his God. God. We are the living epistles of Christ. We are the living epistles of Christ. As the living epistles of Christ, that is, we are the ones that bring Christ into manifestation. That is, men read Christ in and through our life. It is through us that men come in contact with the Lord because we are members of his body. I mean, for you to touch me, nice to touch my head because my head naturally feels it when anyone touch any members of his body. As God men, we are the living epistles of Christ. We are the aroma of Christ. Aroma of Christ means that we radiate Christ. As God men, we are the lights of the world. We are the lights of the world. So that's why the scripture tells us that let your light so shine among men that they may see your good work and glorify our Father who in heaven. So as God men, we are the light of the world. We reflect the light of God in any environment we find ourselves. It's a privileged position that in any field God has placed us, God wants us to be his reflection. God wants us to be his aroma, reflecting his light in every environment. What else are we? As God may, we are the fragrance of Christ. Hallelujah. We are the fragrance of Christ. That is, we are the aroma of Christ. That is, we bring the sweet smell of Christ into a, any environment. What a joy. And of course, this is from 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Now, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus and through us that fuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place with profound signs, wonders, and miracles, accompanying the works of our hands and the works of our mouth to his glory in Jesus' name. As God may, we are the salt of the earth. There's decadence. Salt is needed to preserve any decadence. And we are the salt of the earth. So when there's a problem, or there's a, not more than enough problem in the world, we are the solution providers through God that is dwelling in us. So we are the salt of the earth, the light of the world. The city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. What a privileged position that God has placed us that as God may, we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world, we are the living epistles of God, we are the aroma of Christ. And what a joy to what God has done for us. This is why any where we go we are this reflection we are his expression we are his manifestation because we are in god the true vine himself the lord jesus christ walking in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure what a privileged position that we are in as god man that we have the salt of the head hallelujah to god the father hallelujah to god the son hallelujah to god the holy spirit praise the lord hallelujah